for all the newbies out there, the freshers and the wannabe programmers. You must know the key thing about being a programmer. It's not learning or watching n number of videos. Then what is it? That's what you will see in this video. First, let's try to understand how a brain works. I'm not going to go deep in neuroscience like Andrew Huberman. Instead, we'll just give a brief on the topic. A brain is made up of billions of neurons, like the one in this picture. And what are these neurons? Well, neurons store memory and they also send these electric signals to other neurons. And all these neurons are interconnected and tangled with millions of neurons. The more connections it makes, the more you could recollect and connect your memory to bring a solution. That solution could be a logical or even an analytical one. So the connection is the key here. And the more you make, the bigger genius you are. And how are these connections made? Let's see an example here. Let's say a baby is born and it's kept in a room isolated and is given food and nutrition every day. And there's nothing else in the room except for a bed and a potty. Let's continue this practice till he or she turns five. Well, this is a very harsh experiment, but for the purpose of understanding how a brain works, do you think child will have more connections like other babies in the usual environment do? I mean the neuron connections. No. So let's say there's another baby born and when it becomes a toddler, you give him or her the toys and building blocks. The baby tries to keep one block over the other. It will fail fixing the block, but then it will constantly keep trying and trying. And then it successfully plugs one block to the other. And this is accomplished as it tries to connect multiple neurons which represents the memories of past building block experiences. Now, multiple neurons connections are made as you do logical tasks. The kid now will try different combination of blocks and create new patterns. All this happening cause of the neurons connections. And in the process, new neuron connections are also made. Well, that being said, are you wondering if you are a good logical thinker? Well, that all depends on what you were exposed to, what you were involved more as a child or a teen or as a young adult. Let me give you an example that you may have tried in your childhood. The Rubik's Cube. Well, with 54 cells, you might have tried to solve all the sites, but I know almost every other person would have solved at least one site. But have you wondered why the rare 10 person was able to solve all the sites and you couldn't? Practice. Yes, they all constantly practiced, whereas after one point of struggle, you just let go of trying. But this is absurd. There is YouTube and internet and plethora of information on the web. Anyone could just browse and learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. But how did people learn to solve Rubik's Cube before the internet evolution? Who taught them? Well, no one did. Myself, as a kid, I spent long hours on solving this. And at a point of time, my mind was so fixed to solve this cube and I spent hours and hours trying to solve the cube. What do you think would have happened to my brain? And how is it possible for a human to logically solve a complex task without learning it anywhere? Well, for starters, I'm not a genius, but practice is what made all this possible. Let's focus on how someone learns to solve a complex problem without learning it from anywhere. Remember the toddler and the building blocks? Well, no one taught him to make building blocks. Exactly like when he tried solving, the Rubik's Cube, my brain started saving all the ways I was trying to solve each cell or each site. So the ways which failed and the ways which solved, both were saved. On a constant practice, more and more neurons got interconnected which all represented how to solve each side or bringing a particular cell to a specific spot. Strong and more interconnections were made with the neurons as I was constantly practicing with all the permutations and combinations. The neuron saves all the permutations and combinations as memory and are recollected whenever necessary. But this time with the interconnections that also decides if the steps will fail or not. And now your brain finally has all the neurons or memory or all the information to which is very capable to solve the Rubik's Cube. For a Rubik's Cube, all you need is a Rubik's Cube. 
but just think about computer technologies like html css javascript or any other language so you need to understand the technology and the language then start practicing on your exercises different kind of exercises that's when you build more neuron connections on different ways you could use this technology you understand how google maps work maybe someday that logic will help you in solving a different problem the more variety of exercises you do the more logics you can solve the more hours you spend the longer you will remember the technology and the language so practice practice and practice when you start as a programmer you might be scared with all the new terms in technology but when you keep practicing you will gain confidence that too cause of the neurons interconnections so practice